Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Dark Souls Weapon Lock Challenge Run, the live stream series where we ban a weapon class after every boss battle. And if you want to watch these challenge runs on your own time, be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel and boop that bell button to stay notified. <laughs> so, in the last episode, we defeated four boss battles, and now we find ourselves in the midst of the, the depths of Dark Souls, approaching Lost Isleth. I believe the Centipede Demon's right behind that fog gate. But before we he go attend to that, we'll go exploring a bit more uh, in the area we kind of rushed through previously to see what items we can get. Anyway. It's honestly been a quite a while since I've I've really explored the, the underground uh, here. Um, so I'm I'm curious to see what what items were were on this place in the first place and whether or not they might be beneficial to this point in the run, because I mean, as you can see, we've we've cleared a lot of different weapon classes off the board. Let's we can start with down here. Um, see that item over there, but is there uh. over there? I made that jump. Is it even worthwhile to make that jump? This, these are important questions. Find out. Okay, I made that jump. Oh, well, we soul of a brave warrior. We'll probably take that. That's always a... More souls never a bad thing. And I'm realizing that we have a lot of souls on us right now, so we'll probably want to spend those on like a little bit of dexterity and then maybe either intelligence or strength at this point. Or endurance, just those are definitely stats we need to get a bit higher. Now, mistakes might have been made. Oh, wait, 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 we have to make that jump, don't we? Oh, Dark Souls. <laughs> um, yeah, because I'm not seeing any other obvious way to get back up. Unless I'm just being... No, we can't walk up that... Okay. It's gonna have to be that branch then. Hopefully we survive this. It looks like a pretty massive drop. Um... I don't know. I don't like this. I don't like it one bit. Oh, okay, that wasn't nearly as bad as I thought it would be. That's, uh... That's it. Oh, it was the most man. Hey, it's well, seemingly so far the... Fire Sage. So, we get the highest match just by the default catalyst. Can this actually be used as. Oh, it's probably like one of the situations where we could use it as an attack, I'm guessing, so. Probably go with that. Dark, definitely a dark atmosphere down here, though. Nope. Okay. Well, we shall see. Oh, these things, I think. Oh, are they dangerous? Or are they just kind of there? They're just kind of here. Hmm? 
or something. Bots by some. Okay, it's probably have to come from the other side. Okay. I'm just saying this must be one of the shortcuts for this area because if not for these shortcuts it would take a very long time to walk through this area <laughs> i just i try to imagine if someone actually he went all the way down here to just before um the uh you know that boss the it's the giant tree boss that's at the end of the uh, the bed of chaos that's it so i'm wondering what it would be like for someone if they had to walk all the way out of here from the bed of chaos as a uh, fog gate if they didn't have the the lord vessel probably not a not the funnest of times Taurus Dan. I see you don't want to fight tonight, Taurus Dan. Or maybe they do. I don't know. Ah, that has to wait quickly. <laughs> uh, let's try to get those souls so we don't lose them. That would be a shame. <laughs> It's my own fault, too, for standing there and in their way. Oh, it might do. So I see a chap or demon up there. Is there more than one over here, or am I just being silly? I hard to tell. Regardless. Oh. Ah, didn't fall off the cliff. Oh well. Throw the shot. Ladies and gentlemen, invisible walls at their finest. Hey, no, hey, Dr. Nicholson, uh, no problem. That That's perfectly fine. And, uh, glad to hear that you're, you're going to the gym and exercising, man. That, that's a very, that's a very good thing, Dr. Nicholson. I hope you have a good workout. Have fun, Dr. Nicholson. No illusory walls here, I see. Ah, I see worm. I shall, I shall get the worm. Oh, 
Yep, no problem, Copper Nicholson. Also, you're always welcome to watch the stream archives on, on YouTube. That's um, a... Those will always be available. Um, but yeah. Hope you have a good workout, Copper Nicholson. Been over here. Remember what it was. I see a Toro demon over there. Nope. Is this a path? It it kind of looks like a path, but um. Oh no! Well, that's a path. Hello, Taurus demon. Goodbye, Taurus demon. Oh dear. Come on. There we go. Mm. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I've almost got to sizzle there. That could have been bad. Yeah, I think the thing I remember about Lost Isolith is the the fire jar. Uh, I guess the fire dardens we see there are not particularly dang. Um, they're very very slow, but they deal a lot of damage. I guess that should kind of be the set for most of the things here. Makes for some interesting balance, I will say though. Where's the worm? Was it? It was right down there, wasn't it? Not seeing any items dropped, so... <laughs> There's another Charles Demon, that's... Probably guarding something of interest. That that we have to go through three though to get to your hmm. It's that one rain that gives us more casts. Yeah. Well it worked or do I have to do it? I've never actually used this uh, ring before. Well, it did technically grant extra castings, but not by much. Thanks for doing this. Hoping he'd fall off a cliff. Nope, Burnt footing seems to be fairly firm. We'll have to do this. We'll have to do this the normal way then. Delayed quickly. <laughs> oh, 
Run, 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 run. <laughs> Rather not lose the souls if we can help it. Yeah, this definitely does give us quite a little a bit of extra cast though, so I, I approve, I approve. What? <laughs> I went through the that demon's legs. No. Worms is kind of there. Slowly but surely getting making our way there. We're, yep, there's our souls. Right now we got plenty of castings to get rid of this one. thing I'm trying to imagine is how are we going to do the get that but that get that one I am surrounded by Latoros demons at the bottom of like the fire light of the lava lake. That'll be interesting. Now I think that one I think that chest over there is a mimic, but first I I see we have some worms to deal with. Get out of here. I 
anything else. Probably one right there, right? No? I would have thought. Oh well. There? Yep, yep there's. Oh, well, this is for sure. And we're dead. <laughs> well, that's the way it went. Wait. Probably should have expected something like that. Let's, uh. Sorry, how many spots there were. I want the I want the the item, whatever it is. our souls that is my that is definitely my fault well on the bright side since we did lose all those souls it also means that we have um means that we have no no harm in throwing caution to the to wind at this point I am curious if we went for more of just a one for it kind of it of style, will we be able to even make it over there? Probably not, but worth a shot. And more likely than not, we'll just get nommed by the worms again. <laughs> Well, it's probably a very bad idea, but we'll, we'll try it. Only got first thing is don't be chasing after us, but we'll we'll try. 
Right now for the hard part is the worms are gonna try and numb us. Most likely. Not a minute, surprisingly. What do we got? Oh, that's where it is. The lar okay. Nice. We found a large flame ember, so that's that was good. Well, definitely worth it to come this way then. Even if we lost a bunch of souls along the way. I didn't know they dropped those. That's cool. Bad idea. Hmm. Than a yeet and a, a yeet and a half. Oh, here. Ow. Oh, actually, could the throw steam and damage this thing? I wonder. Well, throw steam. Well, that's a negative. <laughs> Apparently, throw steam and uh, phase through worms. At least we got the large ember, so. also up by the fire runes I think to have some more items mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
Is a tapper demon. Many tapper demons. Got him over there. I'll find out. I think so. I don't see any items. It's also quite the <laughs> arcing jump they made. a lot of them. Run, run, run. I think there- hold on. If I remember correctly, there's a trick I can use where Essentially what we're going to do is shoot an arrow off a cliff and it'll... We'll shoot an arrow off a cliff and it should lure the, the Capra Demon. Well, it did lure the Capra Demon, just not the place I wanted it to go. There we go, that's more like it. That is a proper yeet. Oh, that is also a proper yeet. <laughs> Wonder. We could just work to the dark chaos and use that one up one step we have. Probably more efficient at this point. I wanted to go explore that lake before we go to the centipede demon.
Not how bright it is in this section. Then there's actually a mod that tones the brightness down just a little bit, so it's a bit easier to see at times. It's not the worst, but it, I have heard some complaints about it in the in the in the Dark Souls community. I don't mind, I don't mind it too much though. You see a few items over there. A ton of Tauros demons. I remember. I don't think the Tauros demons are harmed by lava. Definitely not something I remember though. Find out. Nope, don't seem to be. If they are, they don't mind. Yeah, no, they're not harmed by lava. It doesn't make sense understanding the lake itself. It's. Well, that's gonna be too much of an issue for them. Real question, is there a more efficient way for us to defeat these things besides, you know, the normal way? Probably not, but we can... ...certainly attempt. Well, we found the edge of its path, I seemingly. Even over here. Oh. oh, I better see an item. Yeah, we're, we will get cornered if we don't get it, but that's okay. We have zero souls. Well, actually, no, we can't even go get it because it'll we'll, we'll burn to death. I think. We are absolutely going to burn to death trying to get that thing. Oh, we shall attempt. And I called it. <laughs> I mean, I should have said that I lost the lava. I mean, I don't have the ring for it. Guess we'll have to come back for that later. Alright, on that case. Let's see if we can't uh, defeat the centipede demon. I do find this uh, sort of unique uh, magical elevator to be pretty cool. It's like the fire set and everything. Hello, Sizzle. Thank you so much for dropping by, man. How you been? Welcome. You're actually just in time because I'm about to uh, make the first attempt against the centipede demon boss. So that should be that should be interesting. As for what we're using for the centipede demon, I'm thinking we'll try crossbows this time. So I can find it using our heavy crossbow. And some standard bolts. See what we can do. 
to equip the warranty ring. See an item. I'm taped. I want it. Well, we're dead. Or not. Surprise we survived that fall. But yep. Yeah. Uh, what's new with you, Sizzle? Working on some new, new artwork? Ah, that's fair, Sizzle. Yep. Yeah. I'd say... The, you know, with the, between all the holidays, it was very relaxing. Though I, I don't think I've, um, a, as a result, I've been super. I, I think maybe, I'd say, a hey, super busy with IRL stuff. So I haven't done uh, too much stuff, uh, more creative stuff with like Hartwell or some of my other side projects. But you know, that's how the holidays is. It's a busy time to reflect and uh, spend time with, time with loved ones. But now. That most of the holidays are over, it's you know, portraying more back to normal. I'd say December in general was a uh, just a very busy month, um, IRL, but I guess that's to be expected. Anyway, let's attempt this boss. That, that's fair, Sizzleth. That's important to be to stay safe. Now, in terms of boss design, this thing is gnarly. I mean, if you, as you can see, brother, it's most certainly a Lovecraftian horror. Okay. And if I remember correctly, this thing likes to keep its distance. Oh, and do that. We're about to get it tied in. No! Okay. We got the opportunity to drink. But this is the very much a ranged uh, prominent boss fight, I think. It definitely favors uh, ranged attacks. Oh, here. Here he comes. Oh, 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 here. Well, we are now. We are most certainly dead. No. Yo, you finished your hundred percent Dark Souls run during the break. That that's awesome, Sizzle. Out of curiosity, what was not, what was like your favorite part of um, exploring Dark Souls one hundred percent? Like, were there any, like, specific little sections of, of dungeons that you felt like, man, that was really well designed? Or... Maybe some bosses that you're like, those were so much fun, I wish I could face them again. Uh, I'm an idiot. Hawk range. Savvy demon isn't the only thing to worry about. <laughs> Whoops.
Are we about to get? No, we're just getting slammed. I can't see anything. Ow. Okay, if I'm running correctly, the Sampy Demon, the safest place to be is right between its lights, I think. That's some kind of slamming attack. As a life free, I mean the the crossbow is surprisingly fun. Tell that move! No! <laughs> We're doing so well. Okay, but that, that is a strat, though. That is most certainly a strat. <laughs> Alright, so what you got? You actually do have one where I never noticed. Okay, uh, you basically was rushing the game in New Game Plus to get to the last Sif Soul. Which is the last one to actually forge the weapon. Um, and probably like, trying to quite lie with it. Without saying out of bonfire, since you thought you'd ring the bell and just homeward bone back. Quite a lot dropped a homeward bone. I think that might just be an example. Oh, yeah. I, I, I kind of forgot about that, but yep, yeah, you're right. I, I'm pretty sure Quite a lot does drop a homeward bone, and that might be the reason, just as a little hint to be like, you know, we recognize this area is annoying to reach. Uh, it can take a while. So you might have decided that you want to get out of there quickly. It really goes to show how well designed this game is. The fact that like the, the item drops could potentially be used for I guess more optimal play. Is really, really cool. In my in my view at least. That was a mistake. Now, now this is more like it. I'm also actually keeping a decent distance away. Ow! Which for us, like, for players using melee weapons, this would be extremely annoying, but for us, this is actually useful, because he's giving us opportunities to use our crossbow effectively. Not ideal. Not ideal. Well, I did walk in the fire, that's my fault. We can definitely do this boss, it's just a question of watching our footing and being consistent with our dodging. Oh well. Oh, you're 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 right, Sizzle. I I love Dark Souls One's uh, level design that allows you to like do do so many things out of order because of its Metroidvania-ish nature, and I think a lot of that ties into the fact that you um 
ties into the fact that you don't get the ability to fast travel until after defeating Ornstein and Smote. So, as a result of that, they actually had to design the map in a way that could be navigable. Which made it so much more interconnected and interesting, in my opinion. Nope, move! Tell them move! Surprised we are alive. I'm s and now we're not. We're definitely in the danger zone there. Yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah, thought it's pretty much a three. It, it is. It very much is. Uh, says a, a, a three in Metroidvania. But uh, again, I think that ties back to the. I think that ties back to the fact that in Dark Souls 1, you don't get fast travel until, I'd say, about halfway through the game. So that's what leads to the internet to level design. Like, in Dark Souls 2 and 3, there are places where you can go where you, you can't physically walk back once you go past a certain point and you ha you're expected to fast travel, which is a shame. Because it wouldn't take much to adjust the levels to at least allow you to go, uh, to, go to, to walk between them if you so chose. I mean, I think it'd be pretty fun, for example, just as like a challenge to try and get from, just to try and walk through the uh, exit of, of uh, Lothric City to um, uh, Anor Londo, just as like a walkthrough, not like with all the bosses and stuff, just like trying to get from the beat start to end. I think that could be kind of cool, but you... You can only do that in one direction, you can't do that in reverse, I don't think. that oh well hmm. wondering if there's like a better spot to be standing them than that part well I, I guess it depends on what you find interesting uh says lift so I guess in your view Uh, you played Dark Souls 2 a lot, but now you're saying, like, after playing Dark Souls 1, you're saying, um... Dark Souls 2 is, uh, I guess, a bit different. Trying 100% Dark Souls 2 is really hard, I, I will say that. There's also a lot of content in Dark Souls 2. Now, whether you consider the content uh, a fun or just mediocre depends on what you're you're interested in. Yeah. So I, I'd say, to be fair, says look, Dark Souls. Well, I agree that Dark Souls 2 level design is nothing compared to Dark Souls 1's level design, but I also think that Dark Souls 2's level design is still at least more interesting than Dark Souls 3's level design. That sounds good, Sizzle. Uh. It's 
coming for a hot. Ow! Move. Drink. Jump! Jump! We got so lucky there. Once he lots on, he just does not. What? He just pushes us onto. <laughs> he just like backhanded us into you know, the lava. Just like yeah, no, goodbye. <laughs> well then. Well, I That sounds good, though, Sizzle. But I'm thinking, like, if you mean, really mean 100% Dark Souls 2, well, there, then there's a lot of items that would take a while to get. Especially the, um... I, I can appreciate the fact that Dark Souls 2 has, like, those items that you can only get from doing extremely difficult challenges. I mean, there, there, I, I, there's a whole bunch of reasons why. Dark Souls 2 feels a bit different from Dark Souls, so different from Dark Souls 1. I think part of it also has to do with the team that was developing. I don't think it was exactly the same as the team from Dark Souls 1, though I could be misremembering that. Yeah, it wasn't the same team. Okay, I thought as much, because it definitely seemed to be a different design philosophy. Ow. Fire. Fire everywhere. kind of fighting in like a place with barely any room to maneuver and there's a, a tiny little island there that has a, a lot more wiggle room probably try to get over there but yeah i the, the thing about dark souls 2 is it's it's got a lot of unique environments and a massive variety of equipment probably more so than dark souls 1 and uh I guess maybe Dark Souls 3, though I don't remember which game technically has more items. Dark Souls 2 definitely has. If, if there's one thing Dark Souls 2 has going for it over all the other Souls like games, I think it'd be variety. And, and, and that's variety in a, in a lot of different forms uh, variety in locations, variety in enemy types, uh, variety. Oh, man, we cannot make that. That is kind of annoying. Um, that would be a good spot. What if we could make that with the flame plate range equipped? I imagine not. But I also appreciate that there were those two rains that you had to d get through some pretty ch difficult challenges, like... Um, Try to keep going to the, okay, yeah. Try to keep going to the right? Sounds good, we'll, we'll attempt that. What I'd like to do is dad into a loop where it's doing its, its long range attack. That one is the one we can make the, the most use out of with the crossbow here. Long range attack. Nope. Oh, we're about to eat it. What? 
Dave. <laughs> Dave. <laughs> All right, then. Yep. Yeah. The way I see it, I think Dark Souls 1 is the best overall of the, Souls of the three main series Souls-like games. Uh, sorry, Dark Souls games. Dark Souls 2, I think, has the most variety and content. And Dark Souls 3, I think, has the best, I guess, overall weapon balancing and the really, really die turn satisfying boss fights. frame that come on oh son of you demon Be a good spot to take a short break, so don't worry, guys. I will be right back. All right, welcome back, chat. All right, time to run to the right. Well, we did run to the right. Unfortunately, I <laughs> probably should have hopped there. We're looking on dirt, Billy. Um. Oh, okay.
I swear. No! Why? It always happens. Alright, one thing I have not tried yet. If we equip the flame plate rain, since we do have that. And then try to... Let us roll our way through. Can we make it to that central island? We are doing so well. Oh well. I personally playing through it and I'm just not not having as much fun with it as he once did. There are a lot of content, but while there are a ton of weapons, weapons should have move such, which ends up offering in less variety than the first installment. Fusions are the best in Dark Souls 2 out of the three tiles, I absolutely give it that. And I really well, that's the thing, uh, you have to understand, uh Um, what was that? I mean, I did agree with that to a point. I think in general, the different weapon classes, like the different melee weapon classes among uh, all the Souls-like games share a lot of similarities with weapons within their, some, within their weapon classes, with the main differences being among stats and such. But it does, but yeah, Dark Souls 2 definitely has the best infusions. Hey, KK Sparks, thanks for dropping by. How's it going? Looking for inspiration from Beauty and the Beast things. Okay. That's interesting. We're battling the centipede demon in the meantime. I guess I, there's probably a bunch of Beauty and the Beast movies, aren't there? Ow!
What? Man, that yeeted us hard. Yeah. That's just don't compare it to the first one. And from how I remember, they don't really... Yeah, a lot of difficulty comes from an overwhelming... Okay. That, that's fair. I, I can agree with that to, to an extent for sure, says a lot. There's a lot of areas where you just get ganked in Dark Souls 2. Oh, sounds like fun, KK Sparks. Uh, best of luck with uh, that design. Yeah, I, there are a lot of illusory walls in Dark Souls 2 for sure. Um, so, I, I can also agree that I guess if you look at individually designed dungeons, yes, Dark Souls 3 does have some better levels. I, I will say some better dungeons than Dark Souls 2 has. There is an asterisk to that, however, and I think that's however well designed in some of the in individual areas in Dark Souls 3 may be, whether that's the Cathedral of the Deep or the Grand Archives, or if we're talking the DLC, the Rain City. Um, I don't think that compares with the fact that Dark Souls 2 basically lets you skip the first half of the game. Like, it, it gives you an alternate way to do that. And that's like... I want to. How many areas is that? Like almost ten that you can just skip if you know what you're doing. To me, that's that's really darn cool. But at the same time, you might also be incentivized not to skip those areas because they have a lot of good loot and some, you know, some pretty fun unboss battles from. I remember. Hmm. Yeah. I, well, what would be cool is if the illusory wells in Dark Souls 2 hit like a lot of like the cool weapons or maybe some weapons with some enchantments. That'd be fun. Maybe some mean piece of equipment, but you're right. It's usually just like rusted iron coin or something strange like that. I'm also realizing there's a area we can kind of run over here too. Well, I tried to run. There was an attempt. What? see anything. That stance. Move. Move. Okay. Not good positioning here. Oh. Okay. Oh, I've never seen that attack before. Very cool. I think I'll just give this guy some more space. What is it? It can launch. It can launch missiles. What? What is this madness? Oh, come on. <laughs> Well, I will say this. I did not know that it could do that. That's interesting. 
been fighting the Sethi demon for so long, it's using attack patterns, I didn't even know it existed. <laughs> Yeah, that's just kind of my two cents on Dark Souls 2. I mean, for all its, I guess, more linear level design, the answer ship is neat. Yes, there's a lift, but then you ask the question, what does that really accomplish for being the dancer early? If you beat the dancer early, all you really do is get access to some endgame equipment earlier, but that's, that's basically it. You still have to go get the other Lord Souls. It's not like you can just go straight to the, the Twin Princes, which you can't. I wish you could. That'd be pretty cool, but you can't do that. It's, is it nice to get chunks early? Sure, but compare that with the fact that Dark Souls 2 made, made like its, its Great Souls literally optional. Like, all of them. Like, all those bosses leading up to them and those major bosses, they're optional. I think that's pretty cool. Like, the fact that they had the audacity to program an alternate way to do that. And that wasn't, like, a glitch. Whereas Dark Souls 3 is more so saying, like, do I want end game -y upgrade equipment or, or early? It's a nice reward, but it just, it's comparing apples and oranges, I think. But, I mean, you want an example of of that here in Dark Souls 1, I can go to like Lost Isolith uh, much earlier than probably intended, or I could go to the area just before, um, what's it called? Eh. To eat it. Run. Run, 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 run. Focus. Oh, I tried to move. I know. I wonder if the sun if he move. Ow. Okay, that was. I ran straight into that. That's completely my fault. I might actually have to check my durability because I feel like we're using a lot of stuff here. It's all good. Hey, Governor. Thanks for, thanks, thanks for coming back. Uh, I'm doing well. Thanks for asking. Just currently fighting the centipede demon. So, getting a couple more souls just to repair our equipment. We and we'll go from there.
have high at selling at an error standpoint. Lord Souls don't really have meaning, uh, uh, but a lot of times, it, instead of giving actual explanations or endless rules, the lore just ends up being very vague with, uh, I'm going to disagree with that in a, a bit, uh, uh, Sizzleth, and the reason I say that is the NPC dialogue. So, in Dranglech, if you sit and listen to all the NPC dialogue for every character you come across, I think it actually does a pretty decent job of explaining in the story. Now, granted, the dreamer, uh, the, the idea of the whole dream world thing is very uh, confusing. But in terms of like the actual history of Drain Leg and what happened with uh, Queen Nassandra and uh, King Vendrich, it owns some it owns a pretty good detail explaining that without having to resort to item descriptions to get your your information as you would as I mean granted there, there's still plenty of lore in the item descriptions but I'm just, but I'm saying in Drain Leg the the characters do go into depth of that some depth about that lore if you're willing to listen. Quickly. Um, I think Sizzleth and KK are here with Copper Nicholson. Any decent RNG, that's dead. about to die. Or not. right at the edge of this thing's range. Ow. I dodged that, but it's my own fault. <laughs> okay, then. How much more space do we have over there if we, if we run past that little lava section? So if we got a lot, that might be uh, good to use. I agree, Hopper Nicholson. A gym's a lot of fun, and it's also, you know, just good to stay in, in shape. You, you feel you feel good after you do a good workout. It's, your mind's clear, you're, you're energized. Plenty of good stuff.
Mistakes were made. That's your greedy. Ah, okay. There's that you have a Francisca as Snow Queen, okay. I see. I mean, I'm sure there's plenty there's there's probably plenty of myth 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 mythologies out there about Snow Queen, but it, I just think you're more concerned that you don't want to see it frozen, is that it, uh, KK? Try to move towards it. That's it. Okay, well. Eh. Okay, fair enough. You want a, a balance. Okay, fair enough, KT Sports. I'm trying to. I'm trying to uh, take a step back and think of some other examples of Ice Queen characters. And the first one, oddly enough, that comes to mind is the Ice Queen herself, Weiss, from Ruby. But I know Weiss is based off of... What is Weiss based off of? Is it Snow White? <laughs> yes. Uh... We're about to hit. I don't like this. Ow. Okay. One thing I'm not saying I forgot about Dark Souls 1 is that I don't think you can turn your, your point of aim with like a crossbow once you uh, commit to a direction. Can lead to some annoying moments. Out of five dates here, that's right. And there's not much other way to run there. Oh yeah, yeah, there's the ice queen from there. Hmm. Can we dare upgrade the bow, the, the heavy crossbow further? Just it can definitely do a lot more damage than this with the right stuff. Uh, it can be take ice parts. I think it's more so. We don't have a fully upgraded crossbow. It's, it's up there, but it's definitely not fully upgraded. We're also not using the the heaviest um, crossbow bolts. So as an I I think so as annoying as it might seem, I think we should actually do a, a smidge of grinding. So, I'm sure you know what that means, chat. It's time to grab our, time to grab our, our ultra sword. Head to the painted world. Yep. Now, Brad, I usually feel pretty confident with ranged weapons. The thing about the Snappy Demon is the, if the lava was not there in the arena, it would not be that bad of a loss. But because there's not very many places to stand that does make it very challenging to navigate
McClellan. So now we'll just use our our little strat here to get uh, more souls very quickly, involving the um, the phalanx. just want them to all face one singular direction then come at them from the side like so excellent that that was pretty that was pretty good There we go. Oh, I see an item. Oh, right. That's kind of annoying. We'll have to run out of here. Teleport to here, but not get out of here, seemingly. We'll have to just run to the end of the, the area.
All right, sounds good, Sizzle. Thank you so much for dropping by. Have an awesome night, dude. There we Careful. Good thing that throwing knives are not heat seeking, or at least not they don't have that much heat seeking. I know enemy projectiles seem to kind of just drift towards you a little bit, but I think that's more so with arrows than with um throwing knives. Yep, see the, the, the drift there isn't nearly as much as if it were a um or an arrow. All right, Andre. Dead. These will definitely give us some more damage. Some heavy bolts. Also, it might be worthwhile for us to actually return to Fire Link Shrine and see if we can't get the, um... Now that we have Sif Soul, we should be able to get the, the crest that would let us get the composite bow, the compound bow, and the, um... More importantly, the very large ember. If we get ourselves the very large ember, then we'll be in... Then we could upgrade the crossbow further.
Not after the tricky part, because we can't hurt these ghosts without a transient curse, or without being cursed ourselves. So, it's gonna be a lot of running. These things have a, a pretty massive reach. I also don't think we can block them unless we're... Um, unless we have the right stuff, so... Yeah. Run and run and run and run and run and run and run. We're about to get danked. We're going to get danked. You're going to get danked. Which way is the way out? This way, this way, this way, this way. Don't, 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 don't. The ghost can just float through everything, so there's... No point. Okay, grab it. Move. We're about to die. We're about to die. We're about to die. Fuck it. Move. Move. Okay. Run, 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 run. Hit the ladder. The item. I know it's a trap. Bye, ghost. Bye, ghost. And okay, the hard part is here. Like this, this room here is pain, pure and simple. Line up that ladder is just either we're going to get lucky or we're not. Are we getting lucky? We're not getting lucky. That thing's coming after us. Uh, help! <laughs> Thank you. Excellent. All right, chat. We. <laughs> We've actually managed to get here, which is pretty hard unto itself. Is there an item up here? I don't think there is. Oh, you know, yeah, there is. Yeah, there is. Really getting up there requires some platforming knowledge. Go that way, at least not yet. All right, that's what that ghost does. Oh, <laughs> not good. Drain it. Okay. <sighs> that area is always um. Usually just want to rush through it. Now the uh, new Lander rune should be exposed. Boop! 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 Is it up here? It is. We got it, chat. We got the best bow. Pretty sure there'll be some ghosts to trap us over here. I'm waiting for it. They'll appear right behind us. Yep. Oh, there they are. So much pain. <laughs> Oh. 
nice little find. Can't believe we made that jump, but we'll take it. Israel. A lever. Should be a lever around here. Oh, there it is. Oh, not much upper nipple sim. We're trying to get the very large ember. It is down here. The very large ember lets us uh, fully upgrade uh, normal equipment copper nipples in. So it's, it's an extremely useful key item. We will most certainly want. Right, but I know the skeletons. Uh, oh yeah, these guys. They're worth a lot of souls. Can we about to set these guys? We can! I always love these guys' design. It looks really cool. Also look worth quite a lot of souls for the amount of health they have. I think Sizzleth had to head out to get some rest at Hopper Nicholson. Hope KK is doing well. for the bait. Oh, there's the bait. Hello. Hello, Mr. Skeleton. Definitely rather fight you out in the open. What'd you do, uh, Chopper Appleson? Okay, so somewhere in here is the massive monstrosity that we don't want to mess with. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's there or a little bit later in the dungeon. There is it. Oh, nice. Good for you, Copper Nipple. I'm glad you were able to help that person. Oh, there it is. I see it. Giant slime. He has, like, some massive long-range attack that I can use to mess us up. We're not careful. Yep, 
the, I, there's that spike attack, I see. It goes quite far. Alright. Rep slime monster. So one of these. Oh, hello there. I drop titanite chunks that's awesome that's actually really important because those we need titanite chunks a lot apparently yeah. oh really that's your copper Nicholson. uh what there's this job this not here is still like some upper level no! 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 I don't, I don't want to go up! Can you back? No! I refuse! No! Run for the wrong floor! Oh dear. That was definitely the wrong floor. <laughs> I thought it would lead to somewhere good. Instead, it takes us right up to the coast. That was scary. Right, somewhere around here is the very large ember. Somewhere. It's up here. I remember being very high up. Got it! We got it, chat. We got, we got what we came for. Is it over here? I'm guessing not, but I'll check anyway. Oh, yep. A thing over here. I think you're one of the skeletons, but or skeleton enemies, I can't be too sure. Do you hear the ghost though? Up oh, there there's our, our skeleton for Skeletons dot moves. Gladly take. Anything over here? Any illusory walls? I don't think there is. I think there's more ghosts down here. We don't want to be here. We just get to a bonfire and get out of here. This is a definitely not the most enticing of places to be. <laughs> Oh, 
Also, chat, remember, the, remember these strats from way earlier? Like, look how cool that level design is. The fact that that's how we get back here in the Valley of Drakes, I think it's just mm, so, so dead. So interesting. Uh, do you do something for one side? I then you do for the other. For me, it. Uh, you know I do in the Beast movies. All right, do do I do some? Uh. Oh, uh, oh. So you're saying I, I'm trying to understand your question, Tatia Sparks. Are you asking? Do I find certain things easier to do than others? Um, in terms of like drawing art, different artwork. Sure. I think, um... Let's see. I think a, a basic male haircut, for example, is easier to draw than a female haircut simply because most of the female characters I would draw would have, I guess, longer or more intricate hair designs than the male haircuts. It's a very minor thing, but that's, um, that is something that I think I find easier. But I do also try to keep up things uh, fairly balanced. I also think that, um, I think I find it easier to just draw equipment than I do it is to draw human shapes in general, so... I could, I, I could easily draw like various objects in a room pretty quickly, I think, but um, in terms of like drawing like a, a, a character in a particular position, like, I don't know, using a weapon in some, some capacity or trying to like open a door or something, that would be, that would probably take a bit more effort. Yep, so that's kind of my answer, KK Sparks, I think, that for artwork. Uh, for game development. I think... I think I find... Uh, I'll have to answer this question again when I've actually done some, some boss design for Hartwell, but in general, I remember... that uh, some types of bosses I found easier design than others in the past. So... It all has to do with how the different uh, active objects interact with each other. So bosses that don't require very many active objects, I tend to find to be much easier to design than bosses that do require a lot of active objects. Oh, that's just me. Well, that's not on... Oh, yeah, that's another thing. I, I guess I could say I find it... I find it... I find it very... East. I really enjoy, like, um... I, I can rapidly write, like, um... A character's attacks or battle style much faster than I can their personality or things like that. Not to say I don't get to that, I just feel it takes a lot longer to craft that than it does to craft for me to craft how a, how a, a, a battle might occur, how a character might behave mechanically in a game. Does that make sense, KK Sparks? So, what, what I'm trying to say is, if I were in my storyboard writing for a character for a game, I, I tend to find it much easier to write about the, the mechanics that character has, so the gameplay mechanics that character has, whether they're being fought or they're an NPC or something like that, as opposed to writing about the character story itself. Not just yes, write about the character story itself, that just takes a bit longer for me to write out in, in detail. Most weapons are 50 anyway. Uh... We can finally get our plus 11 uh, uh, gargoyle axe and our plus 11 uh, crossbow.
All right, chat. We really buffed out this crossbow. <laughs> we'll buff out our our main axe as well. We're out tight chunks. Oh well. I do not copper Anderson. Um, I, I I guess that's not quite. Um, I mean to be fair, there's plenty of characters or story skeletons out there. You can still very much make them your own. That that's not like the issue I have when writing a character. It's more so just a question of time investment for me. I, I feel like, as long as I have sufficient time and drive to write a character, I can make them pretty unique uh, uh, to who uh, to where they fit into the story and interconnect them within you know with other characters in a meaningful way. It's just that the the amount of writing I have to do to get a character to that point. It takes time, and oftentimes it can be meandering how I get to that point. Like sometimes me writing about a different setting in an area, or a different character, or something unrelated in the in the storyboard gives opportunity for me to write more, get more development to a particular character. So that's what I mean by what I say that KK Sparks is. If you sat me down in a room with nothing and said, "Okay, what's going to take you a little more time?" Writing how how someone or something will behave in a game, or writing who that person is, or what that person is, where it fits into the grander scope, it's not be the former. I can certainly do the latter. I don't hate doing the latter. I'm just saying that the, the latter takes a lot more time for me to really give it the love and attention it, it deserves. So that's just kind of my two cents on it. Oh, so this is like an X-Men thing that I I wouldn't be familiar at all Copper Nicholson. I have not um I have not seen very much of X-Men. You not be as much space here. Oh well. I don't want to burn to death. That damage though. See, my mistake. Well, uh, and Tyrone Anderson. That that shows me how little I know. I I also don't know much about the Fantastic Four. I mean, I can picture them in my head, but that's about it. I don't know like where they fit into things. All right, let's get that heavy crossbow. Get all geared up. Ourselves the hawk ring. All right, chat. Oh, well, before I forget, heavy bolts. All right, chat. We have the straw, uh, the strongest basic crossbow bolts with uh, an almost fully upgraded heavy crossbow. Let's see what we can do to this thing. Like, what's our attack power right now? Uh, yeah, okay. Pretty high for a crossbow. 383 is really good damage for a crossbow. Ah, I see. 
It's not Scott Nicholson. That damage though, chat. That's a lot of damage. I missed. No. Okay, this is clearly doable. We have, we definitely have the damage output to do this. I just need to not be dumb. Run, 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 run. All right, if it's staying there, we need to move. Get, get, in, get inside. just wants to set us on fire right now, doesn't it? Right, 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 right. So scary. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Well, then. How you came up with an armor class system for Deanda? Oh, that's a great question, honestly, Copper Nicholson. And we'll be glad to answer it, but first, I think we should have the bonfire because we just have 40,000 souls. <laughs> yep, we did the thing. We defeated the Sanfi Demon, and we also get to knock uh, crossbows off our, our board here. So. Do, do, do. There we go. Now. We must retire our plus 14 crossbow because it is now banned. You served us well, heavy crossbow. You bid thee adieu. 
Uh, you have to go into a little detail before the end of uh, tonight, Copper Nicholson. I'll, I'll, I didn't want to get to the, at least the start of Lost Isolates, so we'll... So we still have like a few minutes, so I can go into a smidge of detail. All right, so in terms of how I came up with an... with an armor system for Dungeons and Dragons. So, uh, to give some background, I have been running a Dungeons and Dragons campaign um, for, um, I'd say almost for a couple of years now. And in that Dungeons and Dragons campaign, I've homebrewed nearly all the rules, but have come up with, but uh, have done it in a way that allows for a much, um, a, a much more interactive experience in combat as opposed to more traditional D&D where you're pretty limited in, in terms of what you can do depending on the items you have. Uh, I was interested in it for his game, so I was thinking it would be best to do it in public rather. Okay. Uh, you're talking about the, um, the armor system. So basically what I, w the way I designed the armor system in, uh, in my Dungeons and Dragons campaign is I tried to treat it more like an like a, a video game RPG as opposed to how traditional D&D does it where you have the armor class system which is basically just like a dodge roll that you get before anything and then resistances that partially reduce it. Instead what I wanted to do was uh, put less emphasis on I mean shift the focus from the randomness of armor class to the um, more the, the intricacies of armor design. In other words, rather than saying, okay, in traditional D&D, I might say, I resist lightning. So that means I get 50% off the damage I get from lightning damage. Or I'm immune to lightning, which means I can't take lightning damage. And there's not much room beyond that in between. Be, uh, to, to res there's not much room for maneuverability there to... Uh, resist stuff. I'm, I'm being dumb. I forgot to spend the souls. So, instead what I did was I made it so that every single kind of damage type you could think of has some kind of defensive resistance that can be built into your equipment. But let's say you have, a, we'll say, some, some body armor of some kind. Well, the way I figured it is the body armor, the, the player should be able to either find body armor for particular damage types, like maybe one body armor has massive physical resistance that doesn't really resist anything else, or vice versa. And that would, um, of course, help out a lot if you're facing an enemy that does high physical resistance, because suddenly you can just tank those hits. Or there might be some armors that have like a mix of resistances, but they're not, they don't get nearly as high as, we'll say, an armor that focuses specifically on a particular damage resistance. So that creates um, a little bit of interplay there. It, it basically gives the player a choice rather than just, oh, I hope I get an item that lets me resist one particular type of damage, or I, I, I've maxed out my armor class at this point, there isn't much else I can do in terms of defenses. More so giving the player more choices to max their play style and character. Basically characterizing the armor class, if that made sense, Copper Nicholson. Then in terms of how to actually balance out those different resistances, um, the the more, um, the essentially the more resistances, the higher the resistance a, a piece of armor has, the, the higher the drawbacks their armor must pertain. Now, the drawbacks can come in different forms. It might be a loss of mobility. It might be a loss of stealth capabilities. It might be make certain tasks more difficult to do. But basically, if you make something very strong or very good at something, there needs to be some kind of drawback to uh, basically a give and take to justify, uh, to make it so that the player has to consider whether it's worth it to use that particular item. And also to give benefits to other types of armors. For example, if I were to say, well, clearly if I can get the highest amount of resistance possible, that should be what I want, right? And to that I say, no. 
if light armor should be just as viable as heavy armor as and so should medium armor additionally i think there should also should be a benefit to running no armor at all or very very little of it but what those benefits are have to be different from each other generally speaking you can think logically about it to, to figure out what seems appropriate in terms of balancing so the way i think of it is heavy armor should be slow and clunky so anything that will hinder stealth and um mobility are usually decent levers to pull on the other hand with light armor or no armor there either should be you could either run it in the situation where if you're running no armor you have max movements and perhaps light armor doesn't hinder that at all or you could have a situation where maybe the light armor has some of uh, in addition to not hindering movement maybe it has some other kind of tangible benefits maybe it makes the it helps the player be more stealthy. Maybe it makes the player more agile. Maybe it helps the player with parrying. There's, or resisting certain kinds of attacks. There's a lot of different, basically give it some kind of passive effect or ability or capability that justifies the player considering it over going for just the super heavier, high resistant armor. So, Again, it's it's different levers you pull when trying. The the more levers you have to pull, the the more you can uh, make unique items that uh, players might find interesting, depending on their playstyle. Similarly, um, what was I saying? That's not the only aspect of armor design. Because so if you do all that, you what you could end up with is just a hot mess of. Uh, armor types of various different uh, armor um, uh, effects and defenses. And that's great and all, but they could be completely unbalanced if you're not careful. And it also depends, the, the effects of a certain armor also depends on the types of enemies or traps or situations your the DM is throwing at you. Is there an item over there? Hold on, I need to check this out. So, for example, if, um, let's say that the DM uh, gives you armor with high physical resistance, but all the enemies you're facing only deal magic attacks. Well, that physical armor might not be doing you any good in that instance. Of course, there's going to be different situations where... Uh, in some scenarios, you'll have more physical-based attacks, others more magic. That's to be expected. But the DM just tends to heavily favor... Well, it basically, the DM doesn't give you the opportunity, at least at some points, to make uh, good use of your equipment, then why bother having the equipment? So that's one of the, the tricky things about determining what's a quote-unquote good uh, effect to dip a piece of armor or a good set of resistance to give a piece of armor as it depends on what you're going to be going up against and that's more for the dm to decide than the the player to decide but the play if if the dm knows what they're doing uh they should uh at least in some instances give the player a decent enough so, some indication that the player can pick up on to try and figure out what they want to prepare for or at least have a decent enough variety in enemy types or trap types so that in some situation you know there's such there'll be some situations where each player here's equipment has its time to shine it doesn't have to be all the time though anything over here nope okay or but but not necessarily making it so that it's always favoring one type of, of damage or one type of scenario all the time you, you want a healthy balance where sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not. And finally, there's the trying to keep, um... Oh, Solaris here. That's it. What? Why? Why? After all this searching, I still cannot find it. Lair? Why? After all this Ah, uh, Solaire, no. But anyway, um, what was I saying? 
Uh, other thing to keep in mind is just trying to make sh to have good armor balance. I I think you also need to have good weapon balance. So armor like. Heavy armor, uh, armor with quote unquote high resistances means nothing if the weapons are so strong that it doesn't reduce the amount of hits you can take from a particular damage type without uh, being knocked unconscious. So, for example, let's say the highest armor you can get at a particular moment is, I don't know, gives 20 points of resistance. But the enemies that are attacking deal, I don't know, like 80 damage or something massive like that on a regular basis for that particular resistance. That, and the player has, we'll say, 30 or 40 health. Well, then the armor isn't helping them at all. <laughs> it, it's, they're still getting one-shotted, even with that heavy armor for that particular damage type. On the flip side, if enemy attacks are super weak, like all the time then that makes it so that the armor that gives you high enough resistance to overcome the amount of damage being dealt is obviously the armor you want because now you can't get hurt it's okay to have situations where your armor is so high that's against particular enemies that you actually don't get hurt like that can be cool but it shouldn't be happening all the time even with the super heaviest of armor on the flip, though, you need to make sure that the enemy damage values make sense so that heavy armor can feel like it's giving you good protection. But where and light armor here doesn't feel like it's can still feel like it's doing something for you. For that reason, I tend to find uh, beyond like a couple situations where you'd expect an enemy to do an absurd amount of damage with a particular kind of attack. I find that uh, a, a ha having a non-boss enemy uh, have their damage range be in a, uh, in a situation where the threshold may or may not be above the heavy armor resistance threshold. That, um... That, can, that generally offers good uh, balance to make it uh, heavy armor feel heavy, but not like s stopping everything. Medium armor feeling, uh, you know, pretty effective, but not guaranteed, and light armor still doing something for that. Similarly, I think, um, last but not least, we're talking D&D. &D. These armor resistances should not be a set value. They should instead be some variable value like a dice roll. So... In just as armor classes in regular, well, no, armor classes aren't real. Are armor classes rolled? No, armor class uh, for for armor classes. I think you roll evasion with that. With um a, all right, this area, and all the T Rex things. <laughs> I think um, if you can have a uh, different um different dice rolls for armor that also can affect its effectiveness and that's also another lever you can pull to make armor more effective or less effective or maybe have armor that might be higher risk higher reward as an example uh if i say that an armor has a resistance of 10 plus 3d sets i'd probably consider that heavy armor but uh you have to realize the range of resistance in that uh for that armor is anywhere from 12 to 28 which, you know, depending on the rolls, could be a pretty wide range of things. On the other hand, you could have armor that, say, might be a resistance of 16 plus 1d4 that might not have as high potential, but it's definitely more consistent. So, it's another lever that can be pulled to do interesting things. Um, anyway, does that kind of cover it, Copper Nicholson? There's a lot of different things to consider, I think. Now, 
to be fair, Copper Nicholson, I think what you're talking about, um, I'd say early on in the campaign, I was still very much getting used to the whole armor system. It was really only to, as I got much later in the campaign that I start when I really started to experiment with like different kinds of effects and having armors that might give you some other benefit besides just resisting stuff. That's when it started to, I think, get a bit more interesting to have a bit more, uh, to inflict a bit more variety. So if I were to, say, start a new D&D campaign from scratch, that would be one of the things I would definitely consider doing is giving, um, light, light armor a lot more passive benefits, as well as, like, maybe having, like, a unique set of bonuses for players if they did decide to just forego armor entirely. So that way there'd be more interplay. And that's just me as a game designer talking. So this would apply regardless of, of whether it was D&D or just, um... Or just an RPG that someone was designing. Hi. Oh dear. <laughs> we almost got yeeted, chat. That would have been scary. <laughs> Can I hit this thing? <laughs> I have no idea. Am I even doing any damage to this thing, or am I just being dumb? Can this thing even be damaged? Probably an important question to be asking. Alright. Well, it seems to have lost interest in us, so that's good. Wait, 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 wait. No, okay, it's over there. I was about to say, are we approaching the Lost Azalith uh, shortcut? Wasn't sure. Wait. That's some kind of. No, it's not. Okay. So unusual for an item to be here on a ledge without some kind of trap. That's, um. <laughs> Okay, so in terms of how to get over there, is that... Yeah, that that's the spot, I think. Yep, so we run through there, and that would take us up. Well, Copper Nicholson, you have to understand that the armor system was a lot more complex than what's in traditional D&D. And it also runs... Um, it goes against a lot of the different, uh, philosoph- uh, I guess design philosophies of, of the of traditional D&D's armor system. Uh, by basically offering more of uh, I personally enjoy it because I think it offered a lot more variety. As opposed to the, the traditional, oh, there's light, medium, heavy armor with various, um, resistances and that's it. And we're done. But it, it could be overwhelming if, if, like, you're experiencing that for the first time. So my suggestion to any potential future DM is to design an armor system that, that they feel like can make, um... Or I should say, just design a combat system that they feel they can make work uh, in an interesting and effective manner. So if they look at the, D the regular D&D rule set and think, you know, there's enough variety here, then make... then find some way to alter it or just scrap it and make your own, so... So did that variety you're looking for. Yeah, exactly, KK Spark, exactly. So it might not be done in the exact same way that I just suggested. I'm just saying that's how I felt when I looked at, you know, a traditional D&D &D system. I'm like, okay, this doesn't quite give the, the amount of variety I was looking for. So let's, let's, uh, let's uh, go with something a bit more homebrewed here. Fire. 
and not in a good way. That's not really if any it limits your ability to share it with others, Copper Nicholson. It just takes longer to explain it, that's all. It might certainly be less accessible, but I think it has more depth. And I guess that would be my response, is a more complex video game is going to be less popular for the reason that it's more difficult to understand and get into, so there's a higher skill gap or skill ceiling to be had there. But on the flip side, it also has more depth and could potentially be more fun to play in the long run, or more replayable because of its depth, or more fun to master. So that's my response, Topper Nicholson. Well, that's the thing. You'd have a smaller audience, Topper Nicholson, but perhaps that audience might be much more committed to the gameplay mechanic because it's... It, it's so unique and it's it really interests them and they love the way it works and they, they say, think that other stuff just is, isn't nearly as interesting by comparison so you want a, a real let's see where's the how do we get up there i think we have to maybe we have to go around probably um what Good example of that. Think, think of Trails of Cold Steel, Copper Nicholson. That game has a pretty complex uh, combat system. Uh, that, that could be very, very confusing to learn at first. But, it th that system has been refined over her many, many different games, uh, all taking place in the same universe. And the people who do get used to the combat system end up really enjoying it because there's a lot of options to be had there. It doesn't feel like you're just run-of-the-mill uh, uh, turn-based RPG combat system. There's a, a lot of levers to be pulled. So while it's while there might be fewer players who play it, just because it's not as casual, players that do tend to find it a lot more rewarding. So there's some some counterbalance to be had there. these things down here. Yeah, I can also say that, you know, the people who have gotten into Light Trails of Cold Steel first combat system are destroyed. They're very passionate fans. So, even though it might not be as popular a series as, say, Persona, it still, it still has its following. up there the eldritch heart the eldritch horror shall we say mm, 
I I disagree, Copper Nicholson. Some games, by their very design, are going to turn some players off, and that's okay. It depends on the genre. Example: Dark Souls. Not everyone can enjoy this game. That's okay. It knows what it wants to be, and it tries to uh, be uh, to do that thing as best as it can. Same thing and can be said about most gameplay genres, Copper Nicholson. I think it's better to do to pick to pick a, a gameplay mechanic or a gameplay idea and make it the best it can be than it is to try and uh, uh, play uh, placate uh, a bunch of different. Um, um, we'll say different types of players. You can try and sp uh, it depends also on the scope of the game. Anyway, th these things can be quite annoying if I'm remembering correctly. Oh, well, they're acid. So, but that being said, I, I do feel, well, now hold it, Copper Nicholson. Just because you're, you're making a particular gameplay idea the best of it to me doesn't mean it's not going to care to, care to a wide uh, set of, of, of players. What it means, Copper Nicholson, is you're choosing the, a type, uh, like we'll say a, a, a region of players or a type of players that would be interested in your game. And then what you do is you make it possible so that different gameplay styles within that gameplay genre or that gameplay niche you've chosen upon are possible and interesting to go for. Oh look. I think that's one of the, the witches of Lost Isoleth. They have no ability to uh, resist those kinds of things. So, for example, uh, in Dark Souls, while it's very clearly catering to an audience that loves uh, Metroidvania's dungeon crawling and boss battles, you can... Yo, we got the Azul of Catalyst, that's really good. Anyway, uh, the fact that they have melee weapons, ranged weapons, and, and various kinds of magic is actually a very good thing. Because it means that people who are interested in that kind of a a dungeon crawling thing have a lot of variety to try and those different play styles within that genre you know that specific thing the game's trying to do and have fun with it i think that's kind of the the, the happy medium you want to go for when designing a game Well, we can't use that, unfortunately, but that's... It is us, at least. No illusory wall? Okay. Um... Is this the way to the... It might be. I'm very confused because I know there's a bridge somewhere that we want to try and go to. I don't remember how to get to it though. Now this is just the way down. Oh, it's probably this way. I had to guess.
Ah, Titan Eye Demon. Mm. And again, Topper Nicholson, that's that's more of a casual way to look at it. I disagree, personally. I'd much rather have the more functional tents or the tent that has a lot more to offer, even if it's less popular. Because, again, that's... It's something that you can truly enjoy and, and will feel special. And it's just... It's something simple and... Um, easy to get into. Again, there is, you know, there's value in that. Some some games are specifically designed to be easier or to be for a more casual audience to reach a wire on. It's that there's nothing wrong with that. I'm just I'm just saying that I personally prefer something a lot more well designed and with a lot more depth. Right here. Like I, I feel that's more that's going to be more special something that i'm going to actually remember for years to come whereas a more casual experience it might be fun in the moment but years later will i be like was that really worth my time to play probably not i might be like okay yeah that was a, i guess a, a fun distraction for a while but it's not something that i'm going to remember or be able to glow about it like oh delarado no. Blair, why you do this? My very own son. I am the son. Gosh darn it, Slayer. <laughs> No, well, we didn't quite get the bonfire, but I think that'll be a good spot to wrap things up. It was damn late. Anyway, if you're watching here on Twitch. I, I, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with casual gaming, Copper Nicholson. It has its place. I'm just saying, me personally, I prefer. I prefer. I, I'm the type of person that and, and, and prefers something that's more that has a lot more depth to it that that's not that has a higher skill ceiling that has um that takes time to master that's um has a lot of love and passion put into it casual dames can have have love and passion put into them as well I'm just saying that there's 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 some differences there it appeals to different kinds of people that's all anyway I think we should wrap things up. So if you're watching here on Twitch, uh, feel free to stick around for a break. But if you're watching on YouTube and you like what you saw, please consider subscribing on YouTube. It's free to subscribe on YouTube. You can always change your mind later and it's a great way to show support. If you're watching on YouTube, I hope you have an awesome night.